Thanks, Annabelle, for the intro and to welcome everybody to today's community innovation lecture. Um, I'm Robin, technical lead at Mobi, and today I will share with you the recent developments on the open mobility network. Some of you may know me already from Moco LA or from my time working at Daimler Mobility, where I led the development of the so-called mobility blockchain platform. And before we are going to talk about the open mobility network, short OMN, let us get a joint picture of the new economy of movement first. Next. So um, this is uh, from uh, some folks that I found it in the internet from some folks. I want to reference them here from uh, Daimler um, Mobility or Daimler before. And it quite well illustrates how a new economy of movement looked like. So um, users tomorrow want to consume mobility services, most likely as one-stop shop solutions, which integrate mobility service offerings that start with vehicles um, or with cars, integrate bikes, scooters, and maybe even flying cars. And they want to um, consume them if possible with only a single interface that we call a single mobility account or also often what we often hear is called a single mobility identity. And for those who are not necessarily in the mobility space, let, you, let me illustrate this um, with an example that I've um, encountered myself when I arrived at LAX um, two years ago, um, speaking at the MoCo LA. So I've never been to LA before. Um, I arrived, arrived to LAX um, the first day or, um, or the first time. And during this, this um, day at the airport, I saw various signs of the uh, mobility or, or signs of the various mobility options and designated pickup areas for transportation to downtown LA. Unfortunately though, that I had a German mobile phone and um, my Uber was outdated. I didn't connect it to my PayPal account and couldn't use my cellular mobile. So I think most of you know LA, LAX, it's very big. So after I was running around for an hour, asking a lot of people if they could share with me their Wi-Fi. Um, I looked for free Wi-Fi spots. In the end, I told myself, you know what? This is too troublesome. I just get an expensive taxi. So I think the poor taxi driver was happy, but um, this was the start of a trip to LA that fortunately with the MoCo LA um, and the success only got better. Um, but for a mobility service uh, provider, um, this uh, was or the provision of mobility services, this was a disaster. Um, but not only on the side of a user um, that wants to go from A to B, but also from a platform uh, provider perspective, why is there not a service, service like this? And why do most of us have so many mobile um, um, uh, mobility service applications on our mobile phones? Um, there have been, and I've seen it at, at Daimler, um, mobility aggregator platforms uh, being built, but somewhat they all struggled with city regulators and mobility provider onboarding due to issues of data security, integration and management. And that to say, if we want to move into a new economy of movement, I highly doubt that a centralized platform will be successful and a new platform paradigm for the new economy of movement, movement is needed. Annabelle, next. And what is a new economy of movement um, and um, why is such a platform needed from a, a uh, let's say from a um, entire value chain perspective, right? So um, we don't only see monetization opportunities and this is what we've learned from Mobi and our Mobi members in the field of mobility as a service that you have just seen before. Um, the new economy of movement value chain starts actually with the production of the vehicle and the raw material input that's needed when you produce a vehicle. So it starts with the automotive supply chain 
then after it is built and comes out of the factory, actually the regulators and the authorities actually want to know what defines such a, what we call vehicle birth certificate um, or vehicle identity um, before the vehicle starts to consume um, usage-based mobility and mobility as a service, shares data in a connected data market, and finally um, transacts with its outer environment where financial settlement, insurance, insurance and payments are needed. Next. I mean, um, we were all hit by COVID. And um, what I've seen uh, when talking to um, automotive um, players is that currently we may see a little bit backwards trend um, towards centralization. And all, although we see this backward trend towards centralization within the automotive and mobility industry, mainly I think because of COVID, um, I and Mobi believes that mobility, the mobility problem and highly defragmented mobility market won't be solved by a centralized platform. Basically, um, by, um, because of the reason that, I'm, that I mentioned before, issues of data security, integration and management. And again, an example, right? And I would really, really be interesting to know what Uber, I mean, I, I think as the most successful um, uh, mobility platform out there um, has to say about their integration cost of onboarding existing, for example, scooter providers and so on into their uh, Uber application. And um, for that reason, um, actually, legacy mobility players, or that's what we believe at Mobi and our Mobi community does, is that we as legacy mobility players can beat platforms. Um, and um, I want to go a little bit back and have a look at a different industry, and this is the banking industry. So back in the 1960s, banks were threatened by a new point of sale system for payments similar in the way how mobility players are threatened at the moment um, by a giant uh, 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 platforms, right? And so they were thinking how to actually disrupt um, uh, them themselves by building a shared infrastructure for payments as a cooperative um, and thereby becoming the world's dominant uh, point of sales payment network that we today know um, uh, as, as Visa. So in order to solve the urban mobility challenge, we at Mobi believe that cities and mobility players need a visa-like network that helps with a paradigm shift by offering a joint core service infrastructure similar to visa of identity, authority, and assurance at the edge of devices. So that to say, why can't an organization um, that was started in the banking sector in the 1960s, um, not work for mobility. Next. And that's exactly what we envision with the o Open Mobility Network or a short OMN. So the OMN is a community built and operated business automation network that offers mobility stakeholders and related businesses an open and inclusive core service infrastructure in a multi-trillion dollar future of mobility. As a member-owned cooperative, the OMN provides safe and secure mobility services for all members while offering our members a collaborative investment into a joint infrastructure for mobility and related services limits their dependency on internet service providers that we see today and giant software platforms and get them back in full control over connection protocols and, co and core services. Next. And I mean, I've been there, done that um, and discussed this not only within Mobi, but um, also in various um, uh, different uh, other initiatives in the past. And um, what's interesting is that some um, upfront investment and assets are needed to actually do this. And this is the leverage, or this is actually the value that Mobi has 
And this is what we leverage here. So we start, we don't start on the green field and from scratch, we already brought together a community of around 100 members um, before we actually started the development of the open mobility network. And that provides basically a, a starting point um, to onboard existing applications that we see within our Mobi um, community um, in the supply chain space, in the mobility as a service space, but also, also the electric vehicle market um, that now ask for service interoperability to reach their full potential. Basically saying this, I mean, you all know that blockchain or blockchain applications, or let's, let's move a little bit away from blockchain. Let's rather say distributed business models, they only scale with multiple parties, right? And I mean, um, most of our members have experimented with blockchain technology, built their own, I always say, decentralized silos within their companies, but they, they lack in communication, connecting them um, with, let's say, competitors um, or partners in order to reach full potential. But uh, be, um, uh, besides being community-centric and business-ready, um, we even have um, built code and are already ready for, for deployment. Um, within um, over the last, let's say, six, six months, um, we started um, to uh, talk to another network in the telco space that's called uh, CBAN, the Communication Business Automation Network, and together with them developed the joint reference architecture for our services and built deployable code that is ready to use um, to go on next level. Next. And this is basically what it looks like um, to give you a little bit better understanding from a service architecture perspective. As, I'm, as I mentioned, we are not, we are not focusing on um, building applications here. Although um, Mobi helps as a neutral platform to bring um, companies together and lead them towards multi-party application development, um, per se, the OMN is not an application or service network itself. Um, it's rather a core service layer um, that helps vertical applications that run on top of the network with joint, a joint service infrastructure that um, starts with identity, goes to assurance and governance, and maybe in the future has other um, additional service um, to support application interoperability and data exchange on any network and data layer that our members want to consume, right? So um, that being said, we are technology and agnostic um, to, to all networks. We have to be, our members ask for um, different tech, uh, distributed ledger technologies, but also bring uh, different legacy systems so we, at all points, need, need to make sure that they can be integrated and that we are neutral here. Um, and what we do is we are providing the OMN core service layer as a joint ser um, ser uh, services in the identity, decentralized authority, uh, and assurance um, space to start with in order to unlock monetization opportunities across different mobility service applications by allowing what I've just mentioned, interoperability and multi-party data sharing. Next. And I mean, um, I've just mentioned that, right? Um, so um, it's not only in the interest of Mobi. I think the mobility industry and the telco world are the industries that suffered most from um, the central or the platform in the past platform economy. Um, so um, we have identified together with the telcos that actually our joint core services are nearly 99% um, similar when it comes to identity um, uh, and assurance. Um, so we have signed MOUs um, with, with CBAN in order to um, uh, match with the telco demand 
and um, build a joint reference architecture um, for the services that I've just mentioned. But having talked about uh, more the architecture now, um, let us have a look at what actually our members have already built and want to connect to the open mobility network. Next. M mostly um, driven by the discussion um, in the supply chain working group um, and initiated by, by BMW, um, the, the part chain is an interesting application that um, may be connected or may be interesting to being connected to the open mobility network in the future. So what, what did part chain and um, the um, uh, supply chain working group discuss here was basically um, ve uh, vehicle parts um, uh, traceability and provenance um, where the problem was that tracing back the origin and quality of a vehicle component along the automotive supply chain today is a tedious process that involves manual data collection across various companies. And the challenge that we see due to this multiple data silos is that full trans traceability of components um, is very hard um, uh, without basically touching um, data silos manually, right? So. Um, to, to get information out of the silos um, across our, all supply chain participants today without um, the need for manual processing is, is nearly impossible. So what the OMN um, helps is actually the OMN can help or here as a trust anchor to verify participating stakeholders and thereby encourage data to be shared universally in a certified manner. This is what we are discussing right now in the supply chain uh, working group and um, currently thinking about a multi-party um, application um, in this supply chain uh, space where around this phenomena, we could use the open mobility network. Next. Also very interesting um, behind um, the current developments that we see in the EV, EV market is the P2P charging um, uh, use case, right? So today we have a problem. I mean, I'm not an, um, I, I would say I'm not necessarily the um, expert in, in the EV market, but um, hearing from our members is um, that charging networks um, tomorrow, and this is also very obvious to me, need to be able to aggregate hundreds of thousands of EVs while integrate them with the existing grid. The challenge that we have today with um, the, the, um, the grid and the charging network is that those um, uh, cars, right? Um, uh, they, they, they need to be charged, they need to be discharged. And um, at the moment they have a problem um, to being managed as um, small scale decentralized capacities in such a way that they are understood um, I call it a virtual single decentralized entity, right? And with the OMN, um, what we envision or what we provide is to say, hey, we have this prototype available um, that helps you with an identity and assurance service to manage vehicles from various providers as a single decentralized entity that actively can support um, a, a grids or networks congestion management. The next and um, last uh, member application that I want to share with you today is um, um, uh, Citopia. Um, Annabelle, next. And Citopia is basically um, a, a project that was started internally um, within Mobi, um, uh, within the Mobi Grand Challenge, and um, is uh, thought to be um, as an integrated mobility as a, a service platform together with um, cities, right? So what I have explained um, in the very beginning when starting this um, uh, community innovation lecture is that today cities actually miss an integrated mobility platform to offer mobility as one-stop shop solutions, which are needed to solve the urban mobility challenge. And what is the challenge is actually that the, those mobility aggregator platforms that are centralized and that we've seen, um, 
they um, struggle to gain overall acceptance, both from cities, right? Because cities somewhat want to be um, uh, or want to have full control over what's happening in their cities, um, have transparency on what's going on um, and control their city ob objectives on one hand, but also um, with the Uber case um, from mobility service providers that have difficulties to being integrated, saying um, lengthy negotiations around bilateral agreements and all the costs um, that come with this, um, so to say, basically due to issues of data security integration and management. And what we um, believe um, or imagine um, where the OMN could help is actually by the decentralized, decentralized identity framework or, or who of you is in this space and um, providing a decentralized public key infrastructure for the members um, uh, can allow or will allow um, trust or support trust between ecosystem applications and support service interoperability, which is needed um, to integrate existing um, uh, mobility applications into one decentralized platform based on the networks um, which those um, mobility service providers would want to bring with them. This is basically the three applications that I wanted to show you today. Um, and that I also wanted to talk with you um, today in the Q&A session. And um, before we, 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 we go into the Q&A, um, the next slide again should uh, summarize um, basically um, from where we came and why we started to build the OMN um, is actually we've seen that there is indeed a way to turn legacy liabilities into our competitive advantage, right? So today within our working groups or with the applications that we've seen is that um, Mobi members, they build existing applications by util utilizing Mobi standard, but mostly um, those um, applications are still um, built and will be built on um, their individual um, and dispar disparate solution stacks and um, uh, somewhat around their own data silos, uh, which cause missing multi-party adoption, right? And in order to um, move this towards the picture that I've described throughout the whole presentation here, they need a network, um, both, they need both a community and a network that helps them on one hand as a neutral platform, where they are actually able, allowed to talk um, and, and encouraged to develop multi-party applications and have a common joint core service infrastructure that helps them with um, secure data exchange and interoper service interoperability between their applications. And this is basically how come we have started um, the, o, the OMN and why the Mobi community is interested in having such a network and um, move this to the next level. And talking about the next level, Annabelle, next, that you have a little bit um, uh, basically um, a roadmap and um, get a better picture where we are and also where we would love to have you moving forward with us if you are interested in that and um, if you think you have applications um, that um, are interesting to being connected to the Mobi community and the applications that we have within Mo Mobi. Um, so within Mobi um, phase one, um, we call it a call for MVP applications where within the working groups, we have defined multi-party use cases and um, evaluated the business feasibility in the Mobi working groups. From this assessment in the phase two, we have selected first use cases for um, what we so-call the OMN pilot um, um, around scoping and the feature backlog um, and uh, defining um, a somewhat uh, criteria um, for, for an, uh, to deploy them on the OMN network. And the next step is now actually what we are doing um, within 
within the next uh, few months um, to build and um, define the o an OMN pilot, so a small scale pilot, um, where um, basically it comes from the background to say, and this is what I've um, sh shared with you with the member applications, we have now developed various applications and par also partnerships um, in areas such as EV charging, usage-based mobility, and mobility transaction settlement and payments. And the goal now is to say, it's very nice we have this, but um, we want to show that actually this fully function functioning prototype and the reference architecture that we have built together with CBAN um, makes sense. Um, so the goal of the pilot is to utilize OMN core services and support interoperable mobility application and and payments within a mutually trusted business automation network. And um, scope, I think this may be um, interesting uh, to the ones that would want to be part of it or are interested in moving this um, together with us um, to the next level is to say, at the moment, we are we, we thought about, but we are not limited to them, applications around um, EV charging, um, usage-based mobility and maybe V2X payments in a way to say, okay, um, we, we have some um, EV stations or even households or EV cars out there that uh, want to be, be used, right? And somewhat a user or a user, or a user app or user should be able to, to um, uh, uh, have a user-facing application that helps them with a problem um, also where maybe in the P2P charging case, um, he could find a, a charging station from a neighbor next door, um, seamlessly pay for, use the, the charging station and then seamlessly pay for that. Um, of course, I mean, um, we don't um, want um, our standards only to be on paper. So we have done considerable work since two, two to three years on our standards. So we have defined a MOBI vehicle identity standard, a part one and part two, and have a technical um, implementation or, um, or reference art, um, implementation um, defined around that. And same goes for our electric vehicle grid, and, um, grid integration standard. Um, we have more, um, so um, we are also happy to um, use them, but this is um, what we have uh, thought about um, just now. And um, definitely, I mean, all of you know W3C DIDs and by conversations with the US government and also with the European Commission, um, we want to include their um, EIDs um, to somewhat think about how an uh, identity for natural persons and for companies could be included in such a pilot. Um, and um, where does the OMN and also maybe hopefully the, the telco industry is also interested in what we are doing here. Um, so the, decent, or the OMN comes to play is actually around the decentralized public key infrastructure and providing a, a, a trust anchor for that. Um, and um, then utilize um, uh, core services such identity assurance and governance and um, yeah, of course, um, we could um, think um, uh, or, or stop here and limit the scope of the pilot to only the mobility, um, uh, let's, say, let's say service um, world, but due to the fact that um, central bank di digital currency and tokenization um, is um, getting at least more and more discussed, um, we would want to connect this um, also to, to somewhat a, a, a settlement network. Needs to be discussed whether this has to be a token settlement network, but um, one or the other, um, where um, uh, the Europe, and the, I mean, we have looked um, together with the European Commission and to the EPSI network um, and so on, but uh, we are open uh, for um, your input and suggestions and. Uh, just reach out to us and um, we would love to hear what you can offer and what you want to offer to make this both a mobility transaction um, uh, network but also a mobility settlement and payment 
effort. That is um, basically what I wanted to share with you um, uh, here. Uh, thanks for your attendance. And um, I think you, you, you have our emails. If you don't have the emails, feel free to reach out to me, us, Chris Tram on LinkedIn, or drop us a note by the email that you find on the Mobi page. Yeah, thanks. And um, I would say, Annabelle, um, I leave it to you. Um, to start the Q&A and have a fruitful discussion with the audience that we have here together. Yes, we have questions. Uh, first one, how mature is the part chain project? Will the part chain also trace for prototype vehicle parts? Um, I, I mean, um, it's, I mean, it was initiated by, by BMW back then, right? Um, so what I would say is um, I'm very happy um, to discuss this offline uh, with you also um, involving the folks around BMW. If you are interested in um, the rather um, topic around vehicle um, parts provenance, uh, we are currently discussing, let's say, the part chain 2.0 within the supply chain working group around um, uh, um, uh, like um, more maybe battery um, traceability and also the whole um, topics around um, sustainability. Um, so I would want to take this offline as um, I myself can't talk too much about what the BMW part chain folks um, are, are doing and where they're at. And I would need to involve them for more details on that. All right, next question. Is this platform blockchain agnostic? Uh, sure, um, it is. I mean, it's in the end, um, we, we are using standards um, and um, we need to connect not only blockchain networks that um, our partners bring, but also legacy systems. Um, so it is technology agnostic or blockchain agnostic, and um, it is our partners that would bring their solution stacks. So to say, let's let's just say take Citopia. Citopia is built on 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 a um, on a stack. It's um, is built on a blockchain network, and um, what we with the open mobility network would need to do as anchor the identities that live in this network, whatever blockchain network it would be, into um, uh, the OMN and allow service interoperability across um, the, the networks. Great. We also have someone from Navigato who would like to join in the EV charging. Uh, next question, how would the settlement network look like and using which type of token? That's what I would like to know from you, right? <laughs> so um, at the moment, I mean, we are, we are in discussions. We said, um, I mean, this um, topic, uh, when I started um, uh, as a technical lead here at Mobi, uh, was still not that much mature and it was very difficult to sell, I would really say sell to um, like say um, a senior um, VP level management in our partner companies. So we said um, to start with, we exclude settlement. Um, and all that we, all we need to make sure is that we can include it if there are uh, members that propose a solution that our community or the ones that then at some point in time want to build applications on top of the OMN would want to use. Um, so that to say, if you have a settlement um, and payment network in mind that you think is the right one um, to be, be uh, tested or to be integrated into the pilot that we are planning, um, come join, um, talk with us, and um, then we go from there. Oh, Annabelle, can I add to that answer a little bit? This is Chris. Sure. Yeah, so we, we know some of the requirements of the payment system of this network, right? It, it has to be something that can be accomplished at the edge. Uh, it has to have very high throughput. 
uh, and it would need to be a, a stable coin. Um, and that to, to you know, there, there isn't a widely accepted solution that has those characteristics today, but there's an enormous amount of progress going on and going on in the stable coin space. So I think we will get there. Uh, what we don't know today, I think, is whether that will end up being a, a private stablecoin, you know, something you know, like uh, the, the formerly the, the, the project formerly known as Libra, now known as Diem, uh, might be, uh, a, a, you know, one model for it. Um, a, a central bank digital currency uh, might be another. A, a sort of new and improved uh, banking system product of uh, the type envisioned by R3 uh, might be another possibility. Uh, and uh, we have some ideas as well. So I, I think that's open. Uh, it's gonna take some more development before we have an adequate uh, tokenized solution. Oh, yeah, awesome, okay. thanks, Chris. Okay, we have folks looking for product roadmap with timelines for each product. We don't have that yet. Next question, who are the network stewards, trust anchors for the network and governance model? Avoiding Libra failures, question mark. That's from Jim Mason. That's, that's a really, really good question. Um, and um, of course, I mean, governance in the end is, um, uh, when, um, if not the most um, important um, uh, topic um, that we need to uh, work out in order to make this successful. And um, I mean, the Mobi members, uh, they know about it, but what we've done is um, we call it internally the Open Mobility Network Program. Um, so and the Open Mobility Network Program has three tracks. One track is the product track, um, so basically what you have seen today is um, mostly the outcome of the product track. The product track also thinks then about what kind of applications do we um, want to start with? How, how about the piloting and all this, this, this the roadmap? But um, as Jim Mason said, um, governance is um, a bottleneck. So uh, within the governance track together with lawyers, from the um, uh, mobility or the Mobi community, we are at the moment um, thinking about um, existing models that are out there, right? Starting from also Visa, um, but also having a look at um, uh, Libra um, more somewhat in a, in a case study way that we say, okay, what is out there? What can be reused? We don't wanna reinvent the wheel and we wanna do something that works and um, are then afterwards then starting to come up with a governance paper um, that would describe this, what we would circle with, of course, the, the members uh, that want to actually not only build on top, but also invest into, uh, um, let's say, infrastructure like that, or the nodes, right? And um, this is where we are right now. Um, to basically um, disclose this, or let's say, basically let, let you know where we are with the governance. Are other supply chain projects being considered? Of course. Um, so um, at the moment we have not um, uh, decided um, a which um, supply chain project. And also um, we have not um, yet identified the best way to integrate, um, let's say the supply chain, starting from a very raw material perspective um, to the point where it shapes the vehicle identity. So for the ones that work or have worked in the automotive um, sector, um, you know today, if you register more as, a, as an OEM, if you register a vehicle, um, you need something that is called a certificate of conformity. And this certificate of conformity in uh, the US um, needs to comply with NHTSA um, in, uh, in um, uh, the European Union, or I mean, not only European Union, but there's also uh, UN ECE regulations. Um, and this is um, somewhat the connecting point then with the vehicle birth certificate um, uh, that on the vehicle identity before then uh, a customer takes that. Um, and brings this vehicle, maybe an, an electric vehicle into the market. 
and makes it consume mobility services um, in, in, and connect to, to connect the data marketplaces maybe um, where then the settlement uh, payment and um, all this stuff comes in that Chris um, also mentioned. So if you have ideas um, how to connect supply chain to the, let's say, mobility as a service market um, and integrate this into the pilot that we, we are looking forward doing, then um, I would be very, very happy to talk to you. Um, but um, also what I think should be very clear, we are, we are moving minimum viable product or minimum viable ecosystem and don't wanna build a world machine. Um, so this is this is why I said this, but to answer the question, um, of course, we are happy. We are thinking of maybe starting also a new um, a working group around supply chain um, that's not only looking on vehicle parts provenance, but other uh, others. Um, so come talk to us. Um, we are happy to deepen the conversation with you. Thanks. Next question. Does this compete with other Mobi technology partners like IOTA or Ocean, for example? No, of, of course not. I mean, um, we, um, um, I mean, I, I'm, I hope that it, that it, it was um, understandable that we say, okay, we are building with, with this um, open mobility network, we are, we are building a decentralized authority that our members would want to trust um, to um, say, okay, we all agree that party A is a verified application or, or application owner. And I as party B that is also verified within this open mobility network can um, trust the other application um, no matter what kind of um, uh, uh, service stack, and now I could say um, some applications that are built on, on uh, um, an, an, an IOTA, um, I, I unfortunately don't know where Cruise and the Ocean team is now with um, their data markets, but um, I would highly encourage to, to um, have, uh, I would love to see Ocean as part of an application um, where Ocean would consume um, data from applications and actually build a marketplace around what they have. Um, I think this would be fantastic. And in my last talk with Bruce, basically we talked about that um, Ocean is actually looking for um, data contributors. Um, and this is what the Open Mobility Network is doing, right? Application B, A, application B, sharing data with Ocean, for example, or with, and I take Ocean right now, um, so that we can build data marketplaces. Same goes towards IOTA. Um, so we are we are not competing. We are only multiplying um, the efforts that um, our members um, have done. Uh, hey, Robin, it's Tram. Uh, let me add a couple of things to that. So the the open mobility network is essentially think of it as two things. Uh, one is a trusted bridge. Um, so it's it's meant like, meant like um, Robin was mentioning, um, just a way that you can trust the other party in the ecosystem that they've been verified. And the second thing is, think of it like a search engine. Uh, you can have all these data sets and all these services that's available from our members, uh, and they are in their own data silo. How do you find these things? Uh, so we are trying to create a search engine for these databases. Uh, Annabelle, Jim Mason, can I follow up on your thought? You identified two things. You said, A, it's a trust service, and B, it's a directory um, for other services that you could connect with. Does that imply that you don't have, I'll call it an operational capability for other applications on OMN itself as a network? And I'm actually connecting to third-party networks to run the applications. That's my question. Correct. So the application sitting on top is entirely up to our members or anybody that want to use the network. Um, we are here to build a network and it's community built, own and operate. And I think um, as earlier Robin mentioned the Visa network, the Visa network is there to build, own and operate, but anybody can 
um, produce any application using that network. Yeah, like we use Stellar and that works the same way. It's just a network uh, that's high speed. And so we use it for a monetization of anything, basically. So, yeah, that makes sense then. So the point of it is that you're providing, OMN is ultimately going to provide what I call the, uh, the highway, if you will, the capability to run all this stuff. It's not just a, a directory service. It's not just a trust service that's independent, but it's actually saying, no, you're going to run our apps on our infrastructure. Correct. We're trying to create an app store for everybody. It's not just an app store, though. It's different because you're saying you're also providing the runtime for those apps is going to run on OMN specifically. So you're right, it could be an app store, but more than that, it's actually a runtime infrastructure. So in the case of, I already have a, a microservices a payment um, a service, if you will. In our case, we're actually running that right now on Stellar. And that's a separate network, obviously, just like Visa is. But what you're saying is, in as an example, if you were going to use our microservices payment service that is running on Stellar, then you would say, okay, um, you would move that application onto the OMN network or would I be just be interfacing to it? I would say we are, um, um, there are identities definitely living within the network that you've just described, right? And all we need to do is we, we, we need to provide this trust and the verification and the onboarding at this time. And this is what we build with our our first identity assurance and governance core service. And um, this need to be, sh I mean, um, in the end, it, um, it, uh, it co uh, comes and goes with the trust of the members that you build over time. And um, this is why we said we, we want to um, uh, agree on a joint um, core service or a reference architecture together with other networks such as CBAN, um, hopefully GSMA and MEF um, in the telco space that we have all um, a, a, com a, co a common ground um, where we anchor trust um, that hopefully this reference architecture is um, the same. And on top of this, right, all our members in the first, in first within let's say Mobi, they can build um, uh, interoperable applications. Um, they they at least understand um, how they, how and with whom data is shared, and that this data was shared um, with a trusted uh, partner. And this is what we do at the moment, of course, and in the next level. And this is then the additional, or let's say, the additional course course service development. We would need to think whether discovery, um, yeah, discovery um, and, and so on, um, negotiation, protocol negotiation, all this stuff um, is also part of the, the core services. And more importantly, when we start to connect networks, for example, the open mobility network with the communication business automation network, CBAN, um, then we also need to know what is core services that we both share um, and what is core services that we don't necessarily share because we all know in the end, this is a capacity um, and scalability issue and um, it costs a network um, something to run those services spin those nodes and so on. Um, so this, this to basically hopefully answer um, in a little bit more detail the question that you've asked. And I totally agree with what you have said, Jim. So it sounds like to summarize it real quick, I would say you're saying here's a network and if you wanna build an application, deploy it on our network, go ahead. We have a way to do that. That's our plan. But then separately you're saying um, there is, I'll call it a longer term thought, not now, but at some later point it says, oh, look, here's Visa, here's Jim's micropayment network. These are other networks running like in case of Stellar or whatever it is. And longer term, you're saying, oh, if your application runs over there, we're thinking about a way to bridge, uh, to integrate those applications as well. Correct. Okay, thank you.
Robin, I have another question for you. Yep. So is this about big in all cap letters, uh, auto, or are you interested in fast moving startups as well? I mean, um, uh, I think um, so basically what um, I think, of course, we are, um, we are um, not discriminating. Actually, as a startup, it's way easier, I would say, um, to, to join. Um, we encourage that. Um, what we have seen, like, I mean, this is not, uh, um, this is somewhat um, a process, right? We are, we have, we have a community, we need to agree. Um, we are ag agreeing on um, features that we all want to do. Um, we used to have a lot of startups, but startups have um, basically somewhat their own or had their own problems to prove their services right now within the market, right? So um, we are open and um, of course, come join us. But what we have seen in the past, it is more from the, um, like by nature, that a lot of startups, um, they need to act now um, as they have to prove validity to their investors right now. Um, and this is um, then, I mean, what I've seen, um, something that may um, take um, a bit and where a lot of investors um, uh, said uh, from the startup point of, of view, um, um, like, well, I mean, I don't need to answer your question around how you uh, finance yourself as a startup, but I think this to some um, degree uh, makes sense that um, as a corporation, or big, bigger corporation, it's way easier to contribute capacity. And um, because of course, given this is a coll collaborative um, effort, um, we, we need to do this together and we need to build this together and we want to build this together. So we would also expect you to either invest in this or provide um, then uh, capacity at some point in time. And this was why it was not always easy for a startup to be part of, let's say, the the core um, the core network development, and it was a rather this is interesting. I would want to build an application on top of this. Once I, as a startup, have built an application that already works, I hope this makes sense. So, Rob, just to add a little bit. Um... Trump. Let's wait for Trump. I think she cut off. Yeah. You know what? Since we're almost at the top of the hour, let me ask you one more question and we'll let Trump come back when she's ready. All right. But I think what's important is we are we are um, inclusive, not exclusive um, to anybody. Absolutely. Um, so this is important. All right, how is the middleware network certifying data provenance, provenance, integrity, and security from the vehicles and infrastructure? This is, this is a very broad question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, um, I would say um, this, I would say this is, I like to, to do to, to things um, step by step. And um, uh, we would need to figure this out on on the on the fly. Um, I've been there, done that um, within the OEMs. Um, so it's always best to say, okay, we have a prototype, um, and uh, maybe this is, and then we need to understand what, how can actually those vehicles connect to the network, and um, there there are, there are a few different ways to do that. Either we go through telematics devices. Um, uh, ourselves by maybe fleet companies or that. Um, uh, or I think at the moment, and we see this within the automotive companies that we are dealing with, it's not very likely that we get at the moment to the, the, to the data um, uh, that are on those. those uh, on, um, we will most likely use the backend technology that is there. But I mean, this is a very broad question. So I would rather say, um, Let's think step by step 
and um, um, solve this on the, on the go. Great. I've just put your email address in the chat for everybody. So I encourage folks to get in touch with you for, with more questions and, and feedback. Awesome. No, cool. Thanks. And of course, happy to help where we can. And um, yeah, excited to, to hear, learn from you and um, see how we can um, join or we can create joint synergies here. Thank you, Robin. And thank you to all of us, all of you who have attended and supported us today. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.